Most hunters have at one time or another hunted squirrels. They're the most hunted game animal in the United States. Many skills are required in hunting games, such as reading sign, listening, slipping through the woods, and they're all learned when hunting squirrels. Squirrels are very vocal animals, and calling is a very effective way to hunt squirrels. Over the next few minutes, we'll discuss ways that you can use a squirrel call to be more successful. And I have to say here that my favorite way to scout for deer season is to go squirrel hunting. <laughs> I, th- I think to, to all of us, we kind of grew up squirrel hunting. It's one of the first things we did as kids. And, and like you said, it teaches you so much about the woods and sign and, and what hunting's about. A good squirrel hunter is a good woodsman. I'm Will Primos, and I just want to introduce to you Brad Ferris. Brad is in charge of our videos and our TV production, and um, he grew up a lot like I did with a pellet gun in his hands when he was just barely old enough to pump it, chasing squirrels out of the yard. Oh, exactly. Just wishing I could get my 20-gauge shotgun I had, and but couldn't do that in the neighborhood. That would have been bad. <laughs> You know, one thing about squirrels is they're they're very vocal. Everybody's heard squirrels. You listen for squirrels when you're turkey hunting, when you're deer hunting. I mean, they, they always let you know what's going on around you. Because they, they sound the alarm when anything's moving through the woods. Exactly. And there are two major squirrels that we need to talk about. First, you got the gray squirrel or cat squirrel, and then the red or fox squirrel. And, and all the sounds made by both squirrels can be made on the squirrel buster up. Okay, well, let's get started with the two sounds that both squirrels make, and, and that is the alarm chatter and the distress cry. That's right, and, and what you're trying to do is sound like maybe an owl or a hawk has swooped through the woods and caught a squirrel. It's amazing because at times you'll think that there isn't a squirrel within a mile, and you can put on this scenario of making a sound of a hawk and the woods will absolutely come alive because those squirrels know that a hawk, that's one of their number one enemies, swoops out of nowhere and grabs them. And what you're trying to do is just locate them. And that's that's what this is all about. And many times you've been easing through the woods, and like you just said, uh, that hawk comes sailing through the woods and, and just slaps his wing on a branch, and, and every squirrel in the woods goes to scream. Oh, just, I mean, you hear them all around you. All right, the, the alarm chatter uh, sounds like this. And all that is, is they're trying to alert other squirrels in the area that there's a predator about. And when a hawk or owl actually does catch a squirrel, the squirrel will make what is called a distress cry. And it sounds like this. Okay, now backing up a little bit, Brad, the way you made that sound, or that distress sound, was you just grabbed the end of the call and shook it, just just shook it very lightly. Right. And it, the bellows goes back and forth, driving air across the voice, and it makes that little chattering sound. Let's do that one more time. And then to make the distress sound, we've got a little voice in the side of the call, and all you do is blow into the open end of the call. Actually, the exhaust end. You just right. turn it around backwards, and, and you just you just blow into it and, and put a little realism in your in your voice. <laughs> you want to be careful now when you're doing the distress cry. You want to be careful not to cover up the voice, and it's just a little hole that's in the side of the call, just a little white voice. You can see it when you see it, and if you cover it up, I mean, it won't make any sound. So you want to be sure not to cover that when you're holding it. All right, I'll tell you, Brad, to even add further realism, uh, you could shake a leafy bush or shuffle your feet in the leaves, and you'll just be amazed. For instance, that that, that little bit of distress cry, let me grab these leaves I've got here and just kind of make this sound. I'll start doing that distress sound for me. And what you're saying is is that a hawk has caught a squirrel, and he's giving the distress cry, and that leaves shaking, and every squirrel in the woods knows what that is, and they'll all go to barking. Yep. Okay, well, the next call we need to talk about is the bark. And gray and red squirrels both bark, and, and actually they do sound a little different, but both can be made on the squirrel buster. To make the bark of the gray squirrel, you want to hold the open end of the call or the barrel end of the call between your thumb and forefinger, leaving your other fingers open. Simply tap the bellows with the other hand in the following rhythm. Then you should stop, pause just a, just a second, and push the bellows all the way in and release it. And you'll want to do that two times. All right, 
that is a great bark and what I call a little cry from a squirrel, and that really adds a tremendous amount of realism. Okay, now we've made the bark and the squeals, which just adds perfect realism to the call. Now, now let's do it one more time, tapping the rhythm of the gray squirrel. Then we'll push the bellows all the way in and release it, and we're going to do that twice. All right, now to make the bark of the red or fox squirrel, hold the call between your thumb and forefinger and cup your remaining fingers around the end of the call. That gives the call a deeper, more coarse sound that the fox squirrel makes. All right, let's do that for you. And notice that the fox squirrel doesn't have that pushing the bellows in and releasing it little squeal. He just has those little short, short barks at the end. Remember the coarse sound of the fox squirrel is achieved by simply closing your hand around the barrel of the call. Now with the gray squirrel, your hand is open. The gray squirrel starts out a little slower and then goes into a rapid bark and then two squeals. The fox squirrel starts out fast and goes slower. Let's hear the gray squirrel one more time, and then I'll let you know we're going to do the fox squirrel. And now the fox squirrel. Okay, real quickly, let's talk about the calls one more time that we've gone over. First one we're going to do is the distress call. And remember, when that hawk or that owl catches a squirrel, the first sound you're going to hear is the alarm bark of a squirrel and then a distressed squeal. Now the squeal. Now let's go over the next call we learned, which is the bark. It starts out slow and then goes faster. And then the fox squirrel, which is a little more rapid, but goes slower. But you've got to choke the barrel down for the little coarser sound. The last call that we discussed is the alarm chatter. Again, both fox and gray squirrels make this call to alert danger in the area, and it sounds like this. And that's one of the simplest squirrel sounds to make because you're just grabbing the barrel end of the call and shaking the bellows so it does the work for you. It just, it just rolls back and forth. You just shake it, and it'll make the sound for you. A squirrel call can give you an advantage in the woods to help you fill your bag, but just calling any game adds to the fun of the hunt. Calling squirrels is very exciting. Remember, use a squirrel buster to locate squirrels, and you'll be amazed how effective it is. The rest is up to you. Just remember, spending time in the squirrel woods will only enhance your skills as a hunter. You know, and if you have any any questions on calling any type of game, you can refer to our Master in Art video series or just call us at 601-879-9323. Again, at 601-879-9323. Or you can write us at Primo's Hunting Calls, 604 1st Street, Flora, Mississippi, 39071. That's Flora, F-L-O-R-A. Or reach us on the web at primos.com. From all of us at Primos, we wish you a safe and successful season. 